call that y hat is the regression line, right? And we call it b naught plus b1 uh, x. So this comes from data, right? The coefficients b naught, the slope, and the y-intercept there, or I guess this is the y-intercept, this is the slope, they come from the sample data. So if you had 10 or 12 or 15 or 20 sample data points, they would be calculated from that data. And that's all they would come from, right? So because of that, we say that 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 y that we say that this is basically comes from a sample data. So the regression line is a sample statistic. It's important for you to realize that. And what I mean by a sample statistic is the following, and I've drawn this many, many times, so it's not going to be anything earth-shattering for you. But I'm just going to draw a handful of points. Here's a point there, point there, point there, point there. Here's just a handful of points. And through that, we draw a regression line. I'm trying to illustrate graphically that this line just comes from a handful of points that we sampled. And from that, we calculate this line, which had a y hat in there, b naught, and b1. That was the equation of this regression line. Now, this regression line has a lot of uses. We've already talked about a lot of them. The biggest use is that you can use it to kind of predict what might be a reasonable value inside of this uh, data series somewhere, right? You want, to, you want to constrain it so you're only calculating things inside of your data set. You don't want to go beyond uh, to either side of your data points, but inside of here you can use this line as a pretty good point estimate. And we've even learned how to make entire prediction intervals based on using this line as a point estimate. But let me ask you a question. This line basically comes from just a handful of data points. What do you think would happen if we go ask 10 different people Let's do the whole experiment again, 10 totally different people, and get 10 totally different data points. And we would draw a different and calculate a different regression line through there, right? Let me ask you the question is, what if we go and do that again and again and again? What if we go and ask another set of 10 people, another set of 10 people, another set of 10 people? Each time we're going to get slightly different values of the data points, and so we'll calculate slightly different regression lines. Well, see, we're using these regression lines to make predictions about the population, but clearly this regression line here is not the, be not the only one possible. I mean, it depends on who you ask. You're going to get different data and different regression lines. So which one of these is the best? Or isn't it kind of weird that you can have different, um, uh, different uh, regression lines? Well, let me ask you, what would be better than this regression line right here that we calculate as a result of just a handful of data points, what would be the best possible regression line we could possibly come up with? Well, that, my friends, is the following. The best regression line is not going to be y hat. It's just going to be y. And it's not going to be b naught. We're going to call it beta naught. And it's not going to be b1. We're going to call it beta 1 times x. This is the best regression line that you can come up with because I haven't ever talked to you about it before, but this regression line is one that cuts through the entire population of data points. So notice we don't have y hat, we have a y. We do not have b naught, we call it beta naught, and we don't have b1, we call it beta 1. Now in reality, you're never going to get this line. You're never going to know what this line is, but what is it in principle? This regression line, uh, this line, would go through all population data. Now what do I mean by that? Well, let's draw it. So we have a picture here. Now, over here we had a handful of data points. What if we had millions of data points? I could draw these points all over the place. I can spend all day doing this, but you get the idea. Here. Here's a bunch of data points. Millions and millions and millions of people, right? And through that, we calculate the best possible line. I think you would agree we can do that calculation for millions of data points. Sure we could, or billions even. Um, and we're going to get a regression line. This regression line would be the one that would cut through all the population data, and it's the best regression line you could possibly get. The only downside is you have to know all of the data to get there. So you're never going to really know what this equation is, but I'm pointing it out to you. So when you see beta running around, this is the um, basically the... Uh, y-intercept for the regression line that would be calculated if you knew all the population data. So this is a population parameter. This b1 is a slope of this line and it's a population parameter. This value of y that you get from this line, this is a population parameter. So when you see y hat, you know this is coming from sample data. 
B1 or B0 and B1, they come from sample data. This line is just comes from sample data. But if you see this line in a textbook, you know this is coming from population data, from all possible knowledge. This is the slope and the y-intercept of the line that would cut through all the data. Now you can't know it, I give you that, but that's what it is. So to summarize, if we knew all possible data points, it would literally be an Excel spreadsheet with millions and millions of values or whatever it is, we could calculate these coefficients and write down the regression line that would go through all the population data. And then we would have no need for any of this stuff because we would know everything. But we really don't ever really know everything, so this actually writing down this equation with certainty and knowing these coefficients basically never happens. So what we're introducing in this, concept, in this lesson is that these values of B0 and B1, or beta0 and beta1, we have confidence intervals associated with them. Just like in the last section, we had a prediction interval associated with that y value. Because we said that if we ask everybody in the population, we're going to get different values for y. Well, it turns out that there's uh, confidence intervals associated with both of those as well. So let me just kind of write that down and kind of, kind of show you. y is equal to beta naught plus beta 1 x. All right, so there's a confidence interval associated with this. And there's a totally separate confidence interval associated with that. We might slap a 95% or 99% or confidence interval or whatever on that, but they do have confidence intervals associated with it. Now, what would the point estimate be, for instance, the center of this confidence interval? What do you think it would be? How would we construct it? We have to start somewhere, right? Well, we were going to start with our sample data. So the point estimate that comes that's going to be this in the center of that confidence interval for that is going to be what we got from our sample data, right? The confidence interval for the slope here of the line that would go through all the population data, the confidence interval is going to be centered around a point estimate, and that center point is going to be B sub 1. So I guess let me just kind of back up to 10,000 feet and give you the bird's eye view. We have a small amount of data. We construct a regression line associated with it. We say, based on our data that we have, this is the best line that we can draw, and we use it to make predictions. Okay. But we know that there's an, a similarly written uh, line that goes through all of the population data. And if we knew everything, if we were God and knew everything, we would know what B0 is and what B1 is because we would know all of the data. But we never know all the data. So what we really do is we go back and say, okay, this B0 is going to form the center of a confidence interval. The boundary endpoints of that, we're going to say that B0 is going to be 95% confident to lie in this confidence interval between this and this centered about what we know from our sample data. This slope is going to be uh, some value. We don't know what beta 1 is, but we're going to say we're 95% sure that it falls between this and this value centered about the slope that we got from our regression line. And this is very, very analogous to what we just did a minute ago when we started a point estimate at y hat and we added and subtracted a margin of error and we said that the margin, the actual range of y values is what we get from the population. We're just saying it falls between two values centered about a point estimate y hat. Now you can look at this nine different ways. You could stop the video right there and say that's good enough for me and all of that. Honestly, this lesson is not as important as some of the other ones, but it's important for you to know that there exists a regression line that would cut through all the population data. It's important for you to know that we'll never really know what these values are, so we just create ranges for them and say the real line is between this and this, we call it beta naught. The real line has a slope between this and this, we call it beta 1, and we can use as point estimates the data that we have from our existing regression line to formulate that. And we also know from the back of the envelope that basically that means that beta naught and beta 1 have a range of values. So that means that this line that cuts through the population, since you can change beta and, and beta 1, beta naught, beta 1, the y-intercept and the slope, that means that we don't really know what this line is because we don't have all the data, but we know the ranges, or we will know when I show you how to calculate the ranges of these values. So we'll have a range of lines with different slopes and different y-intercepts that would cut through the population data. And we also know from the last section that we can have a prediction interval of the y values of the population will give us, and then that is kind of dovetailing with this idea, you see. Because we really have this prediction interval and in y values in the population data, 
And you can kind of think of those as coming from the different lines that you could draw through the population data. I'm just trying to connect two ideas and say, hey, we had this predict prediction interval in the last section. You calculated a range of values that the population would answer. And then I'm telling you, hey, there's this regression line that cuts through all the population data, but really we don't know what that line really is. So it has a range of values, right? It has a range of values. And you can kind of think of this range of the y values can be coming about as a result or in accordance with the range of lines that you get that are cutting through that population data. However you want to think about it doesn't really matter too much to me. I mean, I'm just trying to explain different ways for you to think about different ideas. If there was one takeaway from this that I really wanted you to pull away from this is that you have sample data, you have a regression line. You've calculated a regression line with known coefficients from your sample data. There exists a population with millions and billions of people out there. You could never know all that information, but there is a regression line that goes through that, even though we don't know what it is. But if we did know what it is, it would have a beta naught for a y-intercept and a beta 1 for its slope. But we'll never know those values. So we can start with these as point estimates, add and subtract some sort of margin of error, and we can arrive at a confidence interval for the range of beta values for beta naught that would be the y-intercept of this line, and the same thing for the slope. And that is going to be calculated in the next lesson, and I'll show you how to find that. So make sure you understand this in principle, then follow me on to the next section where we'll dive into actually talking about it in more detail. Learn anything at mathandscience.com.